In this lesson, you will learn how to read URL query string parameters in Spring MVC web application. Let's assume that we need to create a method that needs to return a list, but limited to a certain number of items. I will quickly create a method that handles HTTP GET request and returns model and view. And to make this method read URL query string parameter, I'll need to use a special annotation called request param. The annotation will need to be used in the method signature, so inside of get users, I will add a new request param annotation. Now, the good thing about this annotation is that it can help us read not only query string parameters, but also form parameters and even files. This is because the servlet API combines query parameters and form data into a single map called parameters. Now, in the double quotes, we'll need to provide name of the parameter that we want to read. For example, a limit request parameter. And then we bind the value of this request parameter to a method argument, for example, integer limit. Now we can use the value of this limit method argument in our code. Now, if your method uses request param annotation, then by default, this request parameter is required and must be included in HTTP request. To make request parameter optional, you will need to explicitly specify it. So inside of request param annotation, right after the name of request parameter, we can add comma and type required equals false. This will make this request parameter optional. To provide default value if the request parameter was not included in the request, we can use another attribute. Instead of required, we will use default value equals and then in double quotes the value, for example, 30. Because we have provided default value, the limit request parameter becomes optional automatically. If HTTP request does contain this request parameter, then our method will use the value that was provided in HTTP request and the method argument limit will be equal to that value. But if HTTP request does not contain this limit request parameter, then the value of our limit method argument will be equal to default value. Now, my project does not have a view that is called users. So if I run this application now, I will get an error. But to quickly demonstrate if the request parameter annotation works, I can simply print the value of the limit method argument. Or I can set a debugger breakpoint at the very first line inside of the method, and I can run my application in a debug mode and debug this method. For example, to run this application in debug mode, I will do right mouse click on the main application file and then instead of choosing run this application, I will choose debug this application. Now that my application started, I will bring in a new browser window and I will go to localhost port number 8080 and because the request mapping annotation that I have set up for this method is forward slash users, I will need to use it to trigger this method. Let's send a request with a valid limit query string parameter equal to, for example, 5 and hit enter. Here we have our debugger breakpoint triggered and if I move mouse over the limit method argument, I'll see that its value is 5 or if I give it a little bit more space, I see that the value of the limit method argument is 5. So that worked. Now let's resume debugging. And I will repeat this HTTP request without providing request parameter. I will remove limit completely and will hit enter. Now my debugger breakpoint triggered and this time the value of limit method argument is equal to 30. All right, so it all works very well for us and we're good to continue. 